Nowhere in the Bible does it actually say repent of your sins. Most of us believe that repentance is about feeling a deep sorrow for our sins. It's what we've been taught in church from childhood through adulthood. And for many Christians, it's become central to their relationship with God, repenting over and over, being weighed down by guilt and regret. But what if I told you that that's not what the Bible actually teaches? What if repentance has nothing to do with sorrow or guilt at all? What if it's something much simpler, yet far more powerful? This misunderstanding has shaped the way we view salvation and how we relate to God. But today, we're going to change all that. Now I want you to think back, how many times have you repented, feeling you're not good enough, feeling sorry, asking God to forgive you? What if I told you, you've been using the word repent wrong your entire life? Now stay with me, because what you're about to discover is going to change your relationship and your walk with God forever. For most of us, the word repent has been ingrained into our minds as something we do when we feel deep regret, sorrow or guilt for our sins. We've been told to repent and turn from sin as if it's an emotional act of remorse, feeling bad enough so that God might forgive us. And many preachers use these verses to back up this idea. But I want you to look carefully at those verses again. Nowhere in these passages does it say, repent of your sins or feel sorry for your sins. This idea of sorrow or remorse being the core of repentance is something we've been taught, but is not what the Bible actually says. So let's talk about what repentance really means. The word that's translated as repent in the New Testament is the Greek word metanoia. But what does it really mean? Metanoia is made up of two Greek words, meta, which means after or beyond, and noia, which refers to the mind. So literally, metanoia means change of mind or thinking differently afterwards. So after you've heard a, a truth, you believe that truth. After you get told something, you change what you used to think to what you think now. It's literally just about changing your mind. But this change isn't about feeling sorry for what you've done. It's about fundamentally rethinking how you understand God, sin and salvation. It's about turning away from old beliefs, like trying to keep the law to earn God's favor and instead believing in Jesus as the way to salvation. This isn't about emotions or guilt. It's about aligning your mind with the truth of the gospel. So how did this misunderstanding creep into the church? How did we lose sight of the true meaning of repentance, metanoia, as a change of mind and start to think of it as sorrow? Or penance for sins. In the early church, repentance was understood correctly as a change of mind, particularly in terms of believing in Christ rather than following the law to earn salvation. But over time, especially during the Middle Ages, this simple and profound concept began to shift. By the 7th century, Irish monks introduced the practice of private confession and penance. Before this, public repentance for major sins was a common thing. But now people could repeatedly confess their sins with a priest in secret. The idea was that through confession and performing acts of penance, a person could satisfy God's justice and receive forgiveness. And this shift in thinking also allowed the church to exert control over the people. Confessing and penance were tied to the priesthood, making people dependent on the church for forgiveness. The idea of earning forgiveness through confession and penance became so entrenched that it is stuck with us, even though the original text never meant that at all. So now we've seen how the true meaning of repentance, metanoia, a change of mind, became distorted over centuries. So let's go straight to the scriptures that are often used to push this false idea and see what they really mean. Let's go to Luke 13, 3, where Jesus says, unless you repent, you too will all perish. So many of you have heard this verse and think that means repent of your sins. But nowhere does it say repent of your sins. It just says, unless you repent, you will perish. Who was Jesus talking to? Jesus was talking to religious Jews at the time. What was the Jewish way of thinking at the time? The Jewish way of thinking at that time was to believe in the law of Moses, believe in the Ten Commandments, keep the law. That is how you earn favor with God. But what Jesus is doing here is he's saying, guys, there's a new truth. There's a new way to do things. I am the truth. I am the light. You get to the Father through me. I am the door. Change your thinking from the old ways. The law couldn't work. The law couldn't make you holy. Change your thinking to me. I am the way that you're going to get to heaven. I will take care of all your sins. I will take care of you. 
Repent means to change your mind. And that's what Jesus is saying there. Acts 2.38 is another verse commonly used to teach repentance. Okay, Peter says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. He has a great verse that preachers would use because it's got repent and it's got sins in the verse. So they put those two together as if you need to feel sorry for your sins, but they miss out the whole name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is what makes it possible for us to be forgiven of sins. It's got nothing to do with us feeling sorry for ourselves. So how that verse reads is, change your minds about what you're believing. Believe in the truth that we've told you about Jesus Christ. Be baptized in the name of Jesus so that you can be forgiven of your sins. And let's go all the way to Revelation. Revelation 2 verses 5. Repent and do the things you did at first. This verse is obviously preached as they need to feel bad for what they've done because they're being so naughty and go back to doing what you used to do and be better. But that's not what it means. Jesus is calling the church in Ephesus to change their minds, to return to their original belief in Him, their first love. It's a call to faith, not to remorse. They need to change from what they're doing now to what they were doing, change how they were thinking, change how they were believing. For years, many of us were taught that repentance meant turning away from sin by feeling deep sorrow and regret. Repentance, as we've seen, is about changing your mind. It's about moving from trusting in your own efforts to trusting in Jesus. It's about believing that Jesus is the one who forgives and transforms you. The old thinking was about self-reliance, but the biblical way is about faith in Jesus. So here's what I want you to do. If you've been carrying the weight of guilt, not feeling good enough, you can't live up to God's standards, it's time to let it go. Reflect on how you've been thinking about repentance and forgiveness. Have you been trying to earn something that Jesus has already given to you? Repent and change your mind today. Trust that Jesus has done it all for you. I want you to pray with me right now. Lord, thank you for sending Jesus so that all my sins are forgiven, past, present, and future sins. Every burden I put on you, Jesus, thank you that you have me in the palm of your hand and nothing can ever snatch me from you. I see myself the way you see me, loved, forgiven, and righteous. And I thank you, Lord, for the transformation that I will see in my life. God bless you. And if there's anyone in your life who needs to see this video, please share it with them. Make sure you've liked the video and are following the channel. Have an awesome week. See you soon.